Welcome everybody and thanks for joining us again. You are watching Let Us Talk About It too, And this is, going, this is going to be a spectacular show. And the reason why I say that is because if you can look behind us, it looks like we're in the jungle somewhere. And you know, I'm a jungle lover. I feel as though I'm a jungle bunny anyways. How about that? <laughs> but with further ado, without further ado, or with further ado, however the case may be, we have the Rainforest Reptile Show, not the Rainforest Cafe, Correct. But the Rainforest Reptile Show. And what they have here with us today is some little livelihoods, you know, some of my generations. So, um, but before we open it, sure. let's discuss, <laughs> <laughs> let's discuss sure. some of these, you know, some of the things that, you know, let's Absolutely. speak about who we is. Okay, I'm Joan Gallagher and I'm the director of Rainforest Reptile Shows. And this happens to be my son, Mac Roboski, and he is the venomous keeper and senior educator at our facility. Okay. Um, we've been educating people for the last 24 years on um, reptiles and their environment. Um, and all of the animals that you're going to see here today are seized animals, mm. abused animals, or confiscated or maybe um, just dumped animals. Oh my goodness. So they actually get a second lease on life, yes. which is very yes. exciting. Yes. As a matter of fact, if you ever go to the Boston Children's Museum, you may see one of our animals there on display. Um, we have them at the New England Aquarium. We have them at Southwick Zoo. Nice. Um, and we also do our outreach program where we go into schools mm -hmm. and libraries, scouts, birthdays, you name it. Yes. Anybody will listen to us so, yak. <laughs> you know, as long as they're an animal lover, we do That's what we right. do, right? Right. I've been loving animals for the past 35 years. Yes, you know what I mean? so, absolutely. <laughs> so. and we do have a little bit of a different facet because we also train U.S. Fish and Wildlife officers. Mm. We train uh, the environmental police officers here, animal control officers, okay. on dealing with these kind of animals because they're first responders. Right, right. Sometimes in a fire there might be an animal there, or sometimes people do things illegally. Yeah. They have animals that are illegal. Some of the animals we have here today you can't have without proper permitting. Correct. And some are just people's old pets. Yes, yes, So there's yes, some yes, really, yes. really cool stuff. Now, Mac has been doing this most of his life, and he's yes. about 21. So how do you like it, Mac? Uh, it's, it's an amazing experience. I wouldn't ask for anything else my whole entire life. Uh, I was actually, the last few years of my life, I was a giraffe keeper down in Connecticut. I worked oh, with giraffe. Awesome. I worked with zebras. I worked with uh, large apes, monkeys, uh, cheetahs, all different kinds of mammal Hi. species. Hi. Hi. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, uh, now that I'm back in the reptiles, uh, it's an awesome experience. I get to outreach uh, and teach people about the importance of animals, their habitats, uh -huh. uh, especially where they live. Um, and it's just an amazing experience. I really do love and, and enjoy doing it. You know, with Mac, he had the opportunity and he took the advantage of that opportunity that was given to him to work and do an internship and work at a, at a zoo, uh -huh. um, which was great for him because it, it let him get out in the world a little bit before he came back home right. to what we do here and decided that's what he wanted to do. Exactly. Okay. So there's a yeah. lot of opportunities out there for people and if you have a passion for it, you really need to take that opportunity <laughs> and embrace it. I love that. I love yeah. that because you know my thing was growing up I was going to be a, a veterinarian. Oh, that was my that was my job. But here I am into production. You know, I was <laughs> <to have> <laughs> no, really, it's funny I how that works. Animals, you know, and no children. But I started with. House full of children and no animals. You know, it's yeah. how, see how things <laughs> plays out. You know, love yeah. my animals, my children, and yeah, my animals. <laughs> you know, because I feel as though I'm an animal sometimes too. You know, and the next time I know, sure. I'm going to be speaking to them. You know. Now, do you have any pets at home? I do. My my dog is actually here somewhere. We'll bring him out. Um, Excellent. I thought he was here in the studio, but maybe he's you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's really resting. Yeah, you know, couch potato a little bit maybe. I have a bird also, a parrot. Oh, nice. Yes, and I, you know, he's he has an issue with self mutilization. Oh, sure. Yes. Yeah. So, with that being said, you know, I just try to keep him as comfortable as possible. Um, I try to ex um, um, change his environment and add new toys when I can. Um, but he's destructive. 
So yeah, they can be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and some of them, there's nothing you can really do about it. Absolutely. And also, with some of them, it's just especially if they come secondhand and things yeah, like that, you yes. just don't know what traumas they've exactly, been through. Exactly. Exactly. So you really have to work a little extra harder. But Absolutely. Today we're going to take out Clifford. All right. Mac let's is going to do that. Okay. Come on. And Clifford, Clifford is a common pet. <gasps> Uh, here, a lot of people have them. Hi, Clippy. <laughs> and Clifford is a bearded dragon. Now, bearded dragons come from Australia. They live in the arid outback oh, areas. He looked like my iguana called and you Hennessy. Can pet him. I had an iguana named Hennessy. Okay, nice. I'm listening. I'm listening. And <laughs> when they get upset, they blow up the bottom of their chin, and it gets very dark. Now, Clifford really? is very friendly, so he won't do it. And then he'll expand his body so nothing can swallow him. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, does these spikes, um, like, spike up? They do. When he blows this? up, he gets much stiffer, and he looks very spiky and oh, not tasty. Oh, he's so cute. He, likes to, he really likes to lick things, too. Yes, he <laughs> likes to taste everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is she doing? No kissing? <laughs> That's okay. true. You don't want to... next time. Right. Maybe next time. <laughs> You don't want to really kiss any animals when you see them out in different locations and you have an opportunity to pet them. You don't really Your want to kiss them because beautiful. that's not part of their nature. I guess. Now, the cool thing about him <laughs> coming from Australia is, you know, people move animals oh. from one country to another, but yeah. Australia never allowed that. Oh, really? So when we started getting bearded dragons, it's because people were illegally importing them here and, and poaching them actually okay. from the wild. But now they have a, a natural, I mean, a, a breeding population. Yes. That they, a captive one. breeding population, so that now they breed them for pets. Now, this is a, oh. he's very, very personable um, animal. <laughs> I want one. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> they're very, um, they're great pets, mm -hmm. um, especially for people like his dad, who's allergic to everything mm -hmm. in the world. So he grew up with reptiles because there was no allergens. Exactly, exactly. So he's very, very cool. Oh, he is. They want to take you home and stuff like that and everything and things like that. Look at your ear. Can we get a, can we get a shot of his ear, please? Can you see his ear? Oh, my goodness. You can almost see all the way through his head. He has wonderful hearing, very good eyesight. He's uh, what we call an omnivore. Uh, but mostly insects, which would be an insectivore. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Um, and he can actually flatten his whole body out so he can fit right in between oh, crevices. Oh, my goodness. And, can uh, I hold him? Yeah. There you go. What's his name again? Clifford. Clifford. Oh, he's, little, Hi, he's got a little Clifford. bit of claws. So. Hi, Cliffy. <laughs> oh, he's comfortable. And they do. Head. They actually breathe them in different colors. Some of them are much oranger or yellower. Mm, um, don't you look like me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Maybe if I tilt this way. There you go. <laughs> you do it? Oh. Yeah, so we really love Clifford, and he's a, a great um, asset to our educational programming because nobody's ever afraid of Clifford. Yeah, I had an iguana. I grew up with iguanas. Yeah, iguana, iguanas are tough. Yeah. I did some research many, many years ago okay, down okay. in uh, Central America with iguanas, and they get very, very big. Their heads yeah. are literally mm -hmm. this big in the wild. My iguana has still reached the heel yeah. of my foot or my shoulder. My shoulder. Yeah. He must have been really oh, tall. Oh, he was. Your he shoes are wicked tall. Oh, you know, that's... <laughs> That's a part of the lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yes. Thank you so for showing So he's very Clifford. cool. Do you want to bring out? Who do we have sure. next? Let's put Clifford away. Talk to you later, yeah. Clifford. Yeah. We'll see you later. We have Mr. George next. Oh, George. Now, George is a unique animal. Georgie. And here in the state of Massachusetts, you do you need him for savannas anymore? It's Clifford. Uh, you can't have monitors. Okay. To yeah, be, no monitors. Will Clifford be okay to be in my home, like as a yes, pet? Yes, you could have okay. Clifford as your pet. See the shade? It's great. Um, and he's going to live. How old is Clifford going to live, Matt? Uh, probably in his teens, somewhere about 15, 16. Oh, okay. Okay. Make See, sure we he go. Knows his stuff. Oh, he looks like um, he knows it to me, Mama. So when you when you do purchase pets. You want to make sure you research them so that you have, um, Sorry. you know, well, Clifford's going to live longer than most cats and dogs. Yeah. And okay. that's a huge mistake. And you know with birds, they live a really long right. time. Mm -hmm. So when you're getting a pet, you really need to research that. Okay. Now, this is George. Now, George, you have to have special permits to have. And he we is a... double a tongue. <laughs> he has a double, a double, he does. a double he tongue. He does. skin on his eye. He, um... He is a savanna monitor. He comes from Africa. He really want to kiss me. Yeah. He really want to yeah. kiss me. He <laughs> eat chocolate. Maybe no, no, potato. no. Mm -mm, too sweet for you, baby. Yeah. 
<laughs> now oh, he, you are cute. Sorry. He is a cousin. That's okay. He is a cousin to the Komodo dragon. The Komodo dragon. Um, he lives in Africa. Um, and he lives in, again, the savannas of Africa, hence Savannah Monitor. Yes. <laughs> um, and he was actually, someone had him who shouldn't have him, and it came to our attention, and they asked us if we would take him. So we take him out, and we use him in our educational programming. And I happen to know George is one of your favorites. Yes, he is one of my favorite animals that we have. And so tell me about him. So George, he might, he'll probably get a little bit longer. Uh, they usually get about three, four or so feet, maybe okay. four and a half. That's pretty big. But uh, they might weigh an upwards of about maybe 10 to 15 pounds even. Um, but they do have this really, really long tail, which is one of the coolest parts can about I these touch animals. It? Of course, sure, you can, you touch, can touch him. He's very, very friendly. And you um, are. As flat you can tell, too. he's flattening himself yeah. out. Uh, and he they likes can, my touch. They, the, exactly. the guys always look. <laughs> 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 Does that guys be? I'm sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the cool thing about him is he's actually doing the same thing that uh, our friend Clifford does, and he can flatten himself out, and he can help him fit himself into small little spots so that other animals can't reach him, and that he can get away from predators like lions and that kind of thing. Now, he uses this awesome, awesome cool tail to actually as a humongous defense. Okay. Now, this is his best defense. He wouldn't actually use his mouth to bite other animals because if he bit a lion, that's that lion would probably right. bite him back, and right. that would not be good. So he <laughs> uses this really, really long tail as a weapon. Okay. And he actually can whip an animal so hard in the face with this really long tail that he can blind it and make it so it can never, ever see again. Wow. Uh, that's their best weapon, and that's usually what they'll do. Uh, they'll try and back themselves up into a corner or whatever they can do, and then just throw that tail out as many times until that animal goes away. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. Now, if you watch him when he sticks his tongue out, you can see that he moves his tongue in different locations. So mm -hmm. he may stick it out over here or over here. And what he's doing is he's smelling. Sinton. Right. Okay. He's, he's literally Sinton. smelling now. Have you ever seen a cat that looks like this? Yeah. They're sticking their tongue out. Okay, I thought well, it was because of sweat. <clears throat> no, it's not for sweat, it's okay. smelling. They actually have an organ in the roof of their mouth where we have soft palate mm -hmm. called the Jacobson organ. Okay. And the reason a monitor's tongue is forked and a snake's tongue is forked is they actually take that tongue and stick it into these little holes in the roof of their mouth and that's how they smell. So their smell, sense of smell is extremely keen. Mm. Um, and a lot of animals have keen smelling like that. Not necessarily a Jacobson organ, but something similar. He uses his sense of smell more than any other sense he has. His vision's good, but it's not great. And his sense of smell really is his, his livelihood. Right. And and right. That's why they have those forked tongues, because mm -hmm. right. they pick up all the Double little senses, particles huh? in the air, and it's they put them back into those two holes on the top of their mouth, like we said, the right. Jacobson's organs, and that's how they can smell. It's a really, really important thing What's for them. What's he eat? Um, so these guys are actually <laughs> carnivores. Um, okay. he, his favorite thing to eat are birds and eggs. And birds if you think and that eggs. you don't okay. eat birds and eggs, think of things like chicken nuggets, mm -hmm. turkey, um, scrambled eggs, which is a scrambled eggnog. bird, oh. and eggnog, which is a liquid chicken. Oh, so we definitely, vegan, we like definitely eat those kinds of things. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's why he has these really sharp he claws. He looks at me like, no, no. <laughs> no <laughs> so no, that no, he I like can... Uh, <laughs> he does. He's a, he's a, he's a good, big meaty. Yeah. So he has these really long claws so that he can dig up eggs. Uh, that's oh, his, so that's his favorite okay. meal. Yeah, so that's the kinds of things he'll eat. But he's one of the only animals in the whole entire world in Africa that can actually eat. And giving deadly. me the side eye. Does, does all the other animals give side eye? He gives eyes? you blue steel like Zoolander. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he can actually eat a deadly cobra. It's a really cool thing. Uh, what he'll do is he'll grab onto that cobra and he'll whack it back and forth. Oh. And if that, uh, that cobra ends up biting him, you'd think he'd die, right? Yeah. yeah. Like a person. But actually, he, he he's takes it. much smarter than that. What he can do is he can use it just like we have shots. Mm. So it's like a vaccination. So we get shots to make ourselves better against certain illnesses. When he's smaller, he'll actually get bitten by those rat or those cobras, and it'll make him stronger and stronger against it until he gets older. And then he can actually seek out those animals and eat them. Uh, and it's a big source of his diet, which is a really cool adaptation that these guys have Excellent in order word. to adaptation. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, Did you that's that? huge because yeah. animals do that all the time. They're okay. always adapting to their new environment, environment. or a yes. different environment, or. I mean, you may see a snake on one side of an island and a snake on, on the other side. side of the island, and they're the same snake. Yeah. But it may have a huge rattle on one side. Oh, okay. Because it, it needs to warn things. But on the other side, it might be a bird eater, so it doesn't have a rattle at all. Nice. So that it can nice. sneak up on those birds. So they adapt to their environment. Um, it takes a while to do it, but... Mm -hmm. But um, it, it, it'll, it'll make right. its way. So you want to touch it? No. no. Okay. Really? <laughs> Maybe the next one, right? Yeah. All right. Maybe so, Georgie. One. Bye, Georgie. I love you. I, 
No, he's okay. Oh, he's okay. He's just smelling he's, you. Yeah. Okay, he must smell the burb yeah. every weekend. He likes to move. <laughs> you move smell around. it. Mm -hmm. there, there is one more cool thing about him. Oh, uh, actually, on top of his head, he has something oh, yeah. that That's all cool. parents have and all teachers have, but kids soft don't block. have. Oh, what? No. <laughs> yeah, he all parents and teachers have I a know, soft spot. You're going to get calls on this. Drag me after the show. Don't drag me after he actually has a third eye. Oh! Yep. Yeah. Oh, I have that. Yeah, yeah of course I have you do. that too, and, and teachers I, have it too. Yeah, I, I just don't I, know how to tune in. I know she definitely <laughs> does because whenever I did something I wasn't supposed to do, she'd yell at me from three blocks away. See what I'm saying? She yeah. definitely would. We know. We <laughs> and know. it's actually called a pineal eye, but it doesn't see like our normal eyes see. I don't know if you it can. It sees can light you and dark. See it on him? Yeah, you can actually. It's a little uh, spot right here in the middle of that. You can see how it's a little bit different. It's um, right there. Yeah. So it's a very cool can, thing. I don't know if, if you, you guys can, can see his clothes. If you can get in into it. I don't so know if you can get up, up close. You guys get right here up close the right there. Head. You guys get up in there. Oh. Yeah, you can see how it's a little oh, bit different in that yeah, circle right, right there. Um, that's that pineal eye. And what he does is he can see light and dark with it. So he can actually tell the seasons by using that oh, awesome cool eye. Gosh. And it's a very important thing for him because he needs to uh, be in certain places <laughs> at certain times of year. So it's, it's a very important adaptation for him yet again. It's his clock. Love yeah, exactly. It. His internal watch. clock. Yeah, exactly. All right, do you want to move on to the next one? All right, one? so let's put Did you Mr. tell everybody about your favorite George? Did you tell all your information you need to? I think so, yeah. 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 This is great. I I'm love learning it. how much he knows stuff. I don't get to go out and see him out yes, in the big world George. as much, so it's good. So let's no. put Mr. Yeah. George over here. Maggie. Yes. Who's next? So this would be like the George. my friend Louis. It's George. I call him all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they would be Mr. Louie. Oh, Mr. Mr. Louie. Yes. Now, Mr. Louie does live in the rainforest. Okay. Um, he lives in Central and South America. Um, and he is probably one of the most feared animals that people have mm -hmm. uh, in the world. Okay. There's two that I can think of. One would be spiders. A lot of people have a real fear of spiders. But the second one is, can you guess what the second one is? The spiders the first scary one. What's the second one? What do you know people, most people are afraid of? Roaches. Well, no, it's not a bug. It's a, oh, it's a reptile. Okay, reptile, What is guys. it? Snakes. Yes, snakes. Most people fear, well, not most, a lot, a lot of people, of people fear snakes. Does, and yeah. the reason for that is there's a, a few different reasons. It might be where they're from, where they live. Do they have wild venomous snakes that they were taught growing up not to touch? Mm -hmm. um, it might be a religious um, affiliation with yeah, snakes. Yeah, the snakes. Um, and it might just be that they look creepy and weird, and people just don't feel comfortable around mm -hmm. them. So Max going to bring out Louie. All right, <clears throat> let me get him out. <laughs> and you're going to notice that Louie also has a forked tongue like George, and it is some scientists do believe that yeah. animals like Louie came from lizards. Calm down, guys. Calm down, <laughs> calm down, calm down. Lizards like George. <gasps> Hi, Louie. Yeah, Louie is a common boa constrictor. You can pet them. Okay. Them. They have a very compelling feel to them. <laughs> Hi, Louie. Um, and Louie was, again, somebody's Ooh, pet. His color is really nice, it's though. It's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, and the more you look at them and the more you spend time around them, the more compelling they oh are. Oh, my goodness. Because they are nice. very calm animals, um, and they're not aggressive unless you are. Of course, they are also a carnivore. Yes. And they do like birds and eggs. Come here, But Louis. they also like, um, <laughs> what else do they eat? Well, they'll eat things like monkeys. Up oh, in the monkeys, tree. right, yeah. I have um, to remember which eat, snake we're talking about. <laughs> frogs, lizards, pretty much anything that they can get their mouths on. I was on. moving too. Um, sure. <laughs> but these guys are really cool because they actually only eat once a month. Once a month. Okay, they, yeah. they don't eat in the every wild. single day like we do because they're not considered cold blooded like some people think. What scientists call them now is ectothermic or poquilothermic. Ecto means outside, thermic means temperature, poquilo means many, and thermic means temperature. So. If it's 90 degrees in this room, he's 90 degrees. Okay. So by definition, he can't be cold-blooded. And uh, if it's 70 degrees, he's 70 degrees. If it's zero wow. degrees, he's really not doing too well because he always Hi, has to stay nice and warm. Hi. Yeah. You know, in a lot of countries, they are revered. Um, well, animals. I never knew that they, they mm -hmm. adapt to the temperature that's Exactly, yep. Um, okay. that, that's a big reason why they don't need to eat every single day because we eat every single day to keep our body temperature up and keep mm -hmm. our bodies going. That's why we're at a constant 98.6 typically. Um, and that, <laughs> that's why these guys always adapt their, to their uh, temperatures. 
Oh, this, oh, he is, what's it, Louis? Louis, yes. So now, it's Louis, yep. Do you feed rabbits and? He gets frozen, thawed out rats that are bred specifically and made for him that we wow. have in our freezer, just like some people would have frozen hamburger. Yeah. He has frozen rats and he'll eat those. Look at him. Um, Look he's going to go underneath, underneath his sofa. Look at him, oh, is he? He's like, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> they're very inquisitive animals. And the, one of the cool I want things. One. No, you <laughs> don't. Oh, okay. Say 25 to 30 years he's going to live, and then you have to take care of him for that. And, and you have then to help grow. Take care of me. Louis is actually, he can, a, a, a boa constrictor like this can get an upwards of about 8 to 12 feet. Oh, now, so let me tell you what 12 feet is 12 feet is two of these banners put together. He'll weigh up to 100 pounds and probably live 25, 30, maybe right? even 35 now you years. Tell me you want to have one in your home. People what? do, mm -hmm. but they, it's not a, a great pet because it's. It lives for a long time, um, and they are, again, what do we call animals that eat other animals? Carnivores. And? I don't know. Predators. Oh, predators, predators. Yes. of course. It's yes. a predator, yes. so it's yeah. not like your cat or your dog, right. although cats are mm. considered predators, but not really domestic cats. Right, not mm -hmm. domestic um, ones. It is a predator, so then you have this 12-foot animal who's about this Bigger thick. Bigger than you. Right, you know? Softball. Right, yeah. and um, they are instinctual. Mm -hmm. So they're going to react accordingly to what they are, in this okay. case a snake. So they really don't make great pets for people who are not really well versed in large animals, now, large snakes. Now, actually, uh, Louis was a, <coughs> uh, a house pet. Uh, he was someone's pet that they had. Uh, and he actually, when we first got him, he never knew how to climb. These, yeah, yeah. these animals have to learn how to climb. Let me they find out you taught him enough. how to climb. So well, actually yeah, what we much. do is we bring him out to programs, and when I take him out of the box, I'll put him on my shoulders, and he can climb all can around Can I have me. him on my shoulder? Yes. Well, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, let's yeah, do let's it do then. It. Yeah. All right, here we go. Come on, Louie. Here, I'll do this He's side. like, she's kind of tall here. Yeah, well, it's the heels, you know. You're killing me. <laughs> oh. So Hi, he'll, he'll yeah. just wrap around you. Uh, he's not trying to choke you or hurt you or anything like that. These guys are not... Man eaters. Oh, snakes he, are not man eaters. Pe some people think that they do, but there's actually never been a documented case where a snake has eaten a person before. Mm -hmm. She's like, rocking yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, so yes. this is part of your ensemble now. You're wearing your boa. Yeah. <laughs> and he is holding on. Mm -hmm. And you can feel the strength, I right? I can feel it. He's but it so took heavy. him a long time to learn to get that strength really? back. Really? Yes. So he, was he? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, so he probably won't get any bigger either, just because of what they. They hadn't fed him correctly. Right. He was in a really bad area. Yeah. And he, he probably was in a small lighting. cage. That he, that's well, that's, that's yeah. a myth. Right. If, as long as you feed something, no matter what cage you put it in, it's going to grow. It just okay. will grow unnaturally, or deformed. Or If I put you in a cage and I fed you, right. you would grow according to that the, cage. The cage but, side, right. right. When you would grow deformed, you continue to grow. Right, right. But it wouldn't be. Uh, oh, do you think you're at home? Yeah, exactly. Do you think you're at <laughs> home? Just checking out the little snake in the back. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's your brother? Yeah. That might be your brother. Hi, Isn't this but awesome, they, guys? They are very uh, misunderstood animals. And, oh. no, he's just going across, yeah. yeah. He's Make not sure he doesn't. Anything. There you go. You can put your hand right on. Oh. Oh. You trying to kiss me? <laughs> you trying to... Oh, nope, he's going around. Who <laughs> <laughs> we'll I put my hand? Right there. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. There. there we go. Okay. There we go. Yeah. There we Perfect. go. Excellent. Um, and then one of the cool things about them and why they are revered in different areas is because. Careful. Too close. Too close. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> We're just watching you. He don't want to. Um, he want to kiss me. Um, they are revered because they can actually shed their skin. Right. Um, and their skin is made out of the same thing that our hair and nails is made out of, which is keratin. So it's really? kind of like they're losing their hair. You know how when you comb your hair, yes, you lose your hair? But they shed, and then when they shed, they shed all in one piece. And these are some sheds, um, and they do that because they're growing. So in different countries, they revere them because they consider that a rebirth. Wow, um, okay. That every time they shed their skin, they're, re they're, they're a new animal. Right. Which is really uh, very right. fascinating. Right, wow, awesome. Okay, Louie, let's move on to the next. All right, come on, buddy. <laughs> I feel he like. Likes a he must like you. Yes. I feel like. <laughs> come on, buddy. Oh, they all like me like that, though. I'd be <laughs> trying to tell them, leave me alone. There you go. All right, so I'll scooch back over here. Oh, and, um, bye, Louie. You know? That was my first time actually holding a, a snake. Love. That was my first time actually holding a snake. Was it really? Yeah. Oh, my Goodness. He was so friendly. And it felt good, didn't yeah. it? It was nothing to be afraid of. No, nope, but it was very therapeutic. It does. Like it feels like a nice massage. Very I like therapeutic. It. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. Awesomeness. We like I like it. that. I like we that. We like it. Let's do the little, can you pull out one of the small boxes? Sure. A little chunky? Okay. <laughs> we're going to bring out the little chunky and we're going to talk a little bit about something that's not a reptile. Okay. And something else. Now, what we do is we're herpetologists. Okay, herpetologists. You know, a herpetologist is someone who studies reptiles and amphibians. Oh, okay. So we brought someone who's just really, really cute, but I didn't prepare Mac for it. So we're going to let him flounder around over there and deal with us. But the differences between a reptile is a smooth, dry, scaly animal. An amphibian is usually moist and they breathe through their skin. Right. So we have things like toads, which are terrestrial, mm -hmm. which means on the land. And then we have frogs, which are aquatic, that live in the water. water. Now this particular one that he's bringing out is just the cutest little thing. Oh, uh, and he's orange too, like the top. Okay. Now this is a, um, a horned frog native to uh, South America. Okay. Places like Argentina. Albino. Yep. And he's an albino, which means he lacks all black pigment in his skin. And they actually breed them for that. This is really? considered a pet too. But the cool thing with him is, and I, I have to bring him out because he's so cute. He is so cute. He's not going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, where are you going? There he goes. Ah. And they can hop. Now, when he's full grown, he's going to be the size of a dinner plate. Get out of here. No, Look at his little punch in his stomach. You, yep, you got a dinner plate. So he's going to get this big. <laughs> his little punch. And then he's wow. only going to live in about a three foot square space. Okay. Huh? So that's only like from here mm -hmm. to here Stage. to here to here. All of his life, he's going to live there. And he's going to dig himself down on the ground and just have his eyes and his mouth open. And as mice and things come by, he just takes his hands and he just shoves it right into his mouth. They actually have teeth. Wow. All frogs have teeth. That's a big difference between toads and frogs. Okay. Frogs have teeth. Toads do not. They have a bony plate on top of their mouths, <laughs> but they do not have any kind of teeth or anything. Like okay. That. Yep. And those teeth help keep his food in his mouth. Because yes. Because remember, it's walking. <laughs> right. And you know, I've never seen a frog eat. No way. But when you yeah, say yeah, that, cool. you know, it's, it's going to grow a thousand feet, and then, you know, <laughs> then the next big old animal that comes by is going to just hop. Yeah. Well, you That's know, interesting I think me. they're very cool, and they're much different than our frogs here, our bullfrogs, which right. are great hoppers and everything. And I was speaking to a woman one, one day from Beautiful Chile. Beautiful eyes. And she said she went out in her garden, and she takes her broom out in the garden, and she's got to sweep them out of her garden. And they're like this big, and she's trying to sweep oh them out of the garden. And, and that's an everyday occurrence for her, because they get down in the roots and dig up her, her vegetables. OK. Um, but for here, up where we live, people have them as pets. Mm -hmm. And they come in a variety of different colors. Sometimes they're green, sometimes they're brown. Um, but they're very cool, because the thing with toads and frogs is they're not a handable animal. It's not okay. something you want to handle all the time because mm -hmm. they actually breathe through their skin. Okay. And when you have toxins and things on your hands, so if you're out in the yard and you're chasing a toad or a frog, make sure you do it with wet hands. Mm, okay. You put them back down and then you wash off your hands. Got it. So, yeah. So what do you have about toads that you know? Anything well, else? Uh, we can talk about the differences between toads and frogs. So okay. Frogs, like I said, have teeth. Toads do not. Also, frogs jump. Now, you would think that that's an obvious thing, but toads <laughs> don't. They actually hop. They don't jump as far as they possibly can. They hop in little short bursts, okay. which is a very cool so thing. So you would be jumping, yeah. and then you'd be hopping. hopping. Ah, where are you going? Hopping, and he wants to get back into his water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, frogs always have to be in water. Like she just said, they do breathe through their skin like this. Mm -hmm. But toads, they do not have to be in water. What they can, they usually just uh, lay their eggs. Where are you going, buddy? They lay their eggs in, <laughs> in water, but they do not live in that water, which is kind of a cool thing. Wow. Yeah. wow. And there's frogs and toads all over the world. Yes. Ooh. Everywhere. Some yeah. live in <laughs> trees, some live on yeah, leaves. Exactly. Some live in um, caves. Mm -hmm. And I've never gotten this close to one. The only time I'm, I'm close to a frog is when you see him, you know, early in the morning. Yeah. You want to touch him? I do. I He's do. very mushy. Yeah. You want to put a little bit of yes. water on your hands? And you can okay. touch him very, very gentle on his back. And feel him. He might jump Ooh. a little And bit. you can feel the difference on how okay, little... soft and he's you can blowing see, up. <laughs> you can see what he's doing. He's blowing himself up like a balloon. Mm -hmm. Now, when he's really, really big and he's about maybe as big as round as my hand, he'll blow himself up if an animal tries to eat him and then it gets they stuck in it. Right. Exactly. Right. It gets stuck and in their gets, mouths like a and balloon. And they look bigger also. Wow. Yeah, there, are, are, there are some frogs out there. And toads out there that are, are poisonous. They carry yes, a poison. Exactly. So um, you always want to wash your hands when you're done handling all, all animals. Right. Um, and that's important. But they are very cool, and I think 
it's interesting to see an amphibian. Absolutely, yeah. always, always. Um, do we want to do uh, a non, another non-reptile or? Sure, do one. Pick one. Pick oh, one. why don't you pick? No, why don't you pick that one up there because she was talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? The Shay's friend? Oh no. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, he's not so funny now, is he? See, you shouldn't have said anything as soon as we you said We got roaches it. and stuff in that box and stuff like that. We sure do. Yeah. We actually have the largest uh, cockroach okay. species we, in the We got to take it out, world. though? We're going to take it out so you can see it. Because okay. Is this a hisser? Yes, these are. And after hopefully he can get it to hiss. Now, yeah, let's get that hole. I don't like, I have yeah. to tell you that one of the animals that I hate, I, I hate, and that's a strong word, hate, mm -hmm. is cockroaches. I don't like them. I don't like to handle them. I don't like to look at them. No, they do not fly. Ew. But they are... Would you like to touch this one? Uh, uh. <laughs> Will he hiss? No, he's not going to hiss. Oh, uh, he won't hiss. They hiss. Hiss? Yeah, they do. Ooh. They're called the hissing cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> You'll make it. They hiss, and they, um... And it's just a way of, uh, like, a big sigh mm -hmm. when we say. <laughs> not her favorite. No, not her favorite. But you know what's important <laughs> about this? And I know that you, you don't like them. He's going to hold it onto your finger? But yes. we need to have animals like this because it's part of the balance and the cycle of what goes on in the natural world. Oh, tell me more. You need to have these animals because these, <laughs> these are our cleaners. Okay. These guys will go out and they'll clean up dead debris of, of plants. They'll clean up dead debris of animals. They'll, they keep everything functioning and working. And not only that, Ooh. they're a great food source. Do you know who likes to eat those? Uh, Clifford, the bearded dragon. Loves uh, them. Loves them. Absolutely would love to eat them. My first friend over them. here. Yeah, your very first friend. Okay. So you see that there's a real balance. You can't We need not Clifford have... around. We need more Clifford. <laughs> 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 Just saying. <laughs> but you really, you, you really need to make sure that, you know, and that's why it's important when you hear about endangered species or mm -hmm. you hear about... Um, animals going extinct because there is a balance we need we need these guys we need the guys that eat them we need the guys that eat those and then we need the guys to clean up after them mm. um, and that's why it's important to hold on to our environments um, and to be good stewards of our environment things like recycling um, you know I mean what do you do to recycle what do you do to save your planet uh, <clears throat> I give to the community yep you you give, know, yeah, I mean, no, absolutely. Um, um, other than that, um, bet let's, you recycle let's, let's, your newspapers, right? Sure, you do. Yeah. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> but and and it's tough. And, and and people, depending on where you live, especially if you live in a city, you don't see this. It makes you want to say it's so cute, but it's so not because just because it's so like. He loves your finger. He's just so like is at he home. I mean, is, like he, is he cleaning your fingers? He is actually. He's so cleaning they he, fingers? He, these he guys, they yeah. can't bite or anything like that. He, there's no way he could possibly hurt me or anything like that. This guy is actually a male, and you can tell by these little two little horns he has on top of his. Oh, head. he got <laughs> females. <laughs> females don't have that. And guess what? Characteristic. He gets yeah. even bigger. What do you mean? He then can he get longer and even wider. So, yeah, like I said, big. these guys are the but longest like and biggest. You, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just don't like them. I, I know that we need to have them. Sorry. <laughs> but I don't like them. Yeah, they, <laughs> the, like I said, these guys are they're the biggest species of cockroach in the whole entire world. The biggest. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And you can see what he's doing with his feelers. He's feeling my hands to just test out where he's going and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, a, Madagascar. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. from Madagascar. Yeah, well, where the lemurs are. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you want to touch that roach? No. Oh. Are you sure? You have this great opportunity. Anybody, anybody, Remember anybody, what I said about audience? opportunities? Do you like to touch the roach? Come here. Come no. touch the roach. Who wants to? Oh, excellent. We have a brave soul over there. Yay! So you can just touch him very gentle on his back. He might move a little bit, but it's okay. Ooh. Is that the type that... Um, because there's some cockroach that when they they can last a week without eating and headless. Like, yeah, uh, yes. pretty much Small all cockroaches girl. can do that actually. All she cockroaches can do that. Um, they're uh -oh. very resilient, and um, it takes an awful lot to kill them unless you have bearded dragons or other animals that can keep that. The shell was down. the shell crunchy for you? No. Enough. <laughs> no. It sounded like it was very hard. Well, I'm sorry. It looks like it's very People hard. People don't eat them. People do eat hard. beetles and large things like that, depending on where you're from. Wow. Um, I've been known to eat a bug or two. Yeah. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> 
Um, I will I, try anything once, especially if I'm traveling. That is um, not with my current diet. I'm a vegan, and I think there's some form of meat in the side of a bug because they're going to eat. Well, <laughs> well no, the, well, yeah. I'm a vegan now, so I can't eat any bugs. Any. <laughs> <laughs> No bug eating today. No bug. Well, you know, you did say you had an iguana, and I've had iguana before. Yeah. I've had that down in South America. They call it the rainforest chicken. Oh, okay. And um, when I was in Africa, what was I eating in Africa? That was, oh, I had crocodile in Africa. Crocodile, okay. Um, which is a native s staple there, like we eat alligator down in Florida. Mm. Um, and that's going to segue us right into our next animal. Yes. Just give me one second to get him and out. And our next animal's name is Hulk. Hulk. Yes, Hulk. And this Hulk. is one of one Hulk. of Mac's he must favorites. Be a strong one. Mac is he our must venomous be a strong keeper. One. So he works with all of our venomous animals, rattlesnakes, kaboom vipers, cobras, things like that. But his dad, who is our curator, mm -hmm. is one of the about twelve or fifteen people who's ever worked with all twenty-three species of crocodiles. And I actually met his father. <laughs> <laughs> when he worked at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm and Zoological Park. So we all have our own little expertise. He has tape on his mouth, guys. Yes, he does. He's an American alligator. And the cool thing about the American alligator is it's a wonderful story of uh, oh, conservation. so cute. When we were growing up, when we were, we put you in the middle. Is he drooling? Yeah. No, he's not drooling. Um, when we were growing up, we used to so get one these hand guys in, the little, in the stores. One hand back here. And they oh, okay. became um, almost extinct. And he might squirm a little bit. Okay. It's just like holding on to a two-year-old dog. In the wild. They became almost extinct in the wild. And um, then we had alligator farmers because they do eat the hide, I mean the meat, and they use the hide down in the southern states. Okay. And conservationists, and now we all hear about how many there are out in Florida. They have millions of them now. But this was a great conservation story of active hunters and conservationers, conservationists working together. There is a wow. balance and a, a management of it. Wow. Now, Mac knows an awful lot about the Hulk, and he probably has talk some me, cool Mac. things he can tell you yeah, about them. Yeah, we can talk about him a little. Are you okay holding balls. him? I am okay oh, holding excellent. him. excellent. So let's talk about something he has inside of his mouth, and let me see if I can get it out. I have some cool little what props. What about his back? Let me show his back, too. You wanna, yeah, we'll talk about his back in just okay. a second. So let me get out this. Ooh, I need some shoes. Now, this, <laughs> what do you think this is? That is a... Uh, yeah, look at yes. like the tooth. Who said that? You think that? that this is his tooth? Out there, excellent. It is. It's Do you guys tooth. think that this is his tooth? Uh, not his right now. No, you don't think so? You don't think it's his vampire thing? Not, not <laughs> no. Or it's his horn. Wait a second, it's his horn. He's a rhinoceros. Oh. No. Or he's a unicorn. Oh, we do <laughs> no. have one. No, this is not his tooth or his horn. This tooth comes from a much larger, full grown alligator. And now alligator, American alligators can get in upwards of about 12 to 13 feet. Now remember, 12 feet is two of my banners right. put together. They weigh 900 pounds and live as long as we do. Crazy. 60 to 90 years. A very, Dang. very long time. But his teeth are awesome. It's another adaptation that he has. So these teeth are hollow, which means there's nothing inside of them, as you guys can see. And it's a really cool thing because actually what happens is one tooth will grow up into the, the other tooth and actually replace it. And so they pop have them out. Exactly. Oh. So they have about 70 to 80 in their mouth at one time. So one tooth will grow up just like this. So they don't get one set spot. just like us? No, they, have, they get about 2,000 teeth. Just think of what they say that they get new teeth all the time. Exactly. And I have to mm -hmm. go to the dentist. Yeah. <laughs> this is one right here. I'm trying to hide right now from the camera. I'm just keeping it real. I'm trying to hide it from the camera right now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I love it. Anybody want to give it a you touch? You guys can rub? come up and touch him. Scaries? Okay. Oh, come on. When, again, remember what I said about opportunities. You have an opportunity in front of you. You've got to seize the moment. Yes. Seize that moment. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's now, okay. Well, we can talk about this potato chip, but it's, it's not really a potato chip. That's how good I am. It, true. It's a, I'll it's eat a, this alligator. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bone in all these little bumps all over his back uh -huh. are actually these bones. They're what you call osteoderms, and actually... What happens is these bones will float underneath his skin. They're not connected to anything. They're not connected to his backbone, his head bone, his knee bone, anything like that. They just float underneath the skin. What happens is the sun will come down, hit these bones, make them hot, and that's how he can warm up his body. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's another adaptation. And the cool thing about these bones are is people got the idea for solar panels by studying animals just like him. And this is where we actually got the idea for it. 
So it's a really cool thing we can learn from these animals, and they have actually been around longer than the dinosaurs. So they've, wow. they've been doing something right. So absolutely, yes. wow, he's so comfortable. And he, he he is very relaxed. relaxed. Now he was somebody's pet, I think. Or yes, it was a seizure yep. out of Connecticut, yes. I think. Oh. Um, but a couple of the other things that are really cool about him is alligators have a four-chambered heart. Now we have a four-chambered heart. Yeah. And it's one of the very few animals that does have a four-chambered heart. Now, they do also have a very small brain, but they use 93% of their brain, where the average human being uses... 20%? Well, my friends use three, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yes, so, um, you know, through time, because they've been on the Earth for so long, they've learned to adapt and use all of their full potential. Now, they say they were around before the dinosaurs or during the dinosaurs, and all that they've done since then is shrink in size. The largest recorded one, I think, now is the saltwater crocodile, which was 28. Uh, it was uh, the largest documented one, which was about 17 feet, 9 inches. And he was wow. actually at the St. Augustine alligator farm. Gomez, but not the wild one. Not the, the wild, wild ones one, yes. were over 20 yeah. feet yeah. Yeah. in Whoa. Australia. Now, the, another cool thing about crocodiles is they're actually our man-eaters. So what's the difference <laughs> between the crocodile and the alligator? So there's a few different, uh, different ways to tell them apart. Now, the first thing is, is... Actually, alligators have only killed about 23, 24 people since 1948. So not very many people. A lot of people think that these guys are man-eaters and they'll hurt paper. they could hurt someone, but you really shouldn't go swimming in an area that is marked American alligators or anything like that down in Florida. Crocodiles come from all across the world. Alligators, there's only two species, uh, the American and the Chinese alligator. So there's only a few spots where alligators come from. Crocodiles, there's 13 different species, so they're all across the whole entire world. Right, um, okay. And they're actually, there's been, there's documented about thousand, few, or a few thousand deaths every single year from crocodiles. Um, and that's just because they are uh, prevalent in areas where there isn't too much uh, technology or anything like that. There isn't documentation. Right. So people will go um, down to the water to their environment. Exactly. And to go and fishing. Them. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And these guys are opportunistic eaters, which means that they'll pretty much eat anything that comes up to them. So will they eat another them. alligator? Yes. Uh, actually, the cool thing is uh, they are cannibals. Um, they will eat other alligators. When they're first born, they have to watch out for other alligators because that's their biggest threat. Wow. Especially yeah. the males. Yes, exactly. The males will do um, that. Another thing about the differences is their snouts. So this guy has more of a U-shaped snout. And if you want to hold it down yeah, just a little bit so you can see. see. Uh, they have a U-shaped snout. Uh, crocodiles have a V-shaped snout, so it'll look more I'll triangular. Nice. Um, I'll be also, nice. he He's has sleeping on the job. Yeah, <laughs> he has an overbite like Bugs Bunny. So crocodiles, you okay. can see the bottom and the top uh, layer of teeth they interlock they like a zipper, yeah. just like this. These guys, you can only see their top teeth like Bugs Bunny. Another Got cool it. thing about okay. it, when an alligator bites down because they're so broad, they actually crush their prey mm. when they bite down and then they pull mm -hmm. it off. When a crocodile bites, it's actually like a perforated piece of paper where they bite down and then they pull along the dotted lines. Okay. So it's a little bit different that way. These guys are temperate animals, which means they can withstand much colder temperatures where uh, crocodiles are tropical animals. Mm -hmm. They have to be in a warm environment. <clears throat> okay, okay. You're very gorgeous. He is just beautiful, isn't he? Oh, I want to take you home, <laughs> too. Not so much, yeah. really. <laughs> Remember, when he's done growing, he'll be, like I said, 12 I feet long. I know. Yeah. And what are you going to do with a 12 foot I'm going to have him time? as my protector. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, your guard dog. <laughs> yes, yeah. come in my house if you choose. Now, the intruder. other cool thing about these guys is he has these little black dots all over his mouth. I don't know if you got to see since you were holding him. He has these little black looks dots like all over his mouth. <laughs> what? Hair bumps. Yeah. What those are called are ISOs, or a really long word, integumentary sensory organs. Okay. Now, these little black dots work just like a reflex. So when you go to the doctor, he takes this silly rubber hammer, mm -hmm. and you wax in the elbow, and your elbow goes boing. And you wax in the knee, and your knee goes boing. Right. And actually, <laughs> these guys have a similar thing. So if I took the tape off of him, and Could I Could you demonstrate that? Sure, I can do that for you. Okay. So if you, you want to take one so step towards that way, just, just in case he does yep. decide to wiggle, so I can take this sure. tape off of him. And actually, if you exactly. tap him very gentle on the top of yeah, his mouth, just like this, oh, he'll open up cool, his right? mouth. So what do you guys think if I took this and put it in his mouth, he would do? You think I'll bite it? All right, well, let's see. He should. Oh, here we go. Let's try that one more time. He should bite. Does anyone know why he's not biting? Exactly. If I don't touch him, he will not bite. As soon as I do. Oh, 
tail bite. Cool, right? Just like that. And it's a simple adaptation because what they do is they swim in the reflex. water. It's a reflex. Right. If a it's fish a reflex. Yep. taps him on the top of his mouth, he'll open up his mouth really wide. And as soon as it comes in, and it comes in, and it touches him just like that, he'll snap down. And that's a great way for him to be able to catch his dinner. It's one of those things he doesn't think about you what he's doing. Like, yeah. He just reacts yeah. to it. Exactly. So that way he, he doesn't like miss out like, on a, on he a does dinner. Like he like one more <laughs> thing about the inside of his mouth <laughs> is, can you see his tongue? I can. It's beautiful. Here, let me try and yank it out for everyone. Here we go. Ready? And <gasps> la la la. Oh, la la la. Say, let us exactly. talk about it. Let so us his, talk his tongue is stuck to the bottom it? of his mouth. Two. And that's so he doesn't bite it off because we know how it feels when you bite your tongue. Yeah. So actually, let me put the tape back on his Can you mouth. talk a little bit about his eyes? Because sure. it's a really cool so adaptation. So you can see how he can take his eyes and put them down inside of his mouth. And that's also so that when he actually is. Uh, Grabbing onto an animal because he is also a carnivore, so he eats meat. When he grabs onto an animal, he doesn't get his eyes poked out. So he actually has holes in his skull that he can actually put his eyes down into. And it's another, oh my, the tape. Uh, it's another <laughs> adaptation that they can, they can use so that they don't hurt themselves. I need and it's that. a very important thing. So as you can tell, I can put my hands literally flat over his head. Ooh. And then he can take his eyes He's like, what are you and doing? put them back. Look at them legs. Look at them legs. Look at them legs and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that is so phenomenal. Yeah. I love it. I'm so glad that you guys are even have this this ability to even work with these exactly, animals and yeah. all this great stuff. Because it is. It's a passion. It's a, yeah. It's it, definitely it, a passion. It truly is. And these are kind of misunderstood, cool animals, and um, we uh, love to work with them. Um, oh, and one of the reasons we God do education you. is because we want people to have a better understanding of them. They're not something to be feared. They're something that we need to keep around for a long time. Absolutely. Um, they're part of our heritage. Mm -hmm. They're part of the Earth's heritage. Yes. Uh, Mother Nature likes yes. them. And we, was, <laughs> we actually were supposed to be speaking to them in this lifetime. Yes. So maybe the next lifetime you'll have a chance to, to, to speak with the alligators and the crocodiles and the birds and the fishes and all the dogs and all the great, you know. Does anybody in the audience have something to say? Does Any anybody questions? want to come up and touch and hold him? You come do? on up. All right, come, come on, on up, up here. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you have to do it. If you have opportunities like this, you really should This take, is very, very, a, very, very, very much uh, so. It might be the last time you get to get right. to a crocodile crocodile this close you know it's just very fun all right do you want to try and hold him? it yeah. all right so one hand underneath his neck where my hand is one hand underneath his tail just hold like that firm. and hold him, him very very tightly oh he looks so heavy isn't he heavy do you want to turn around so yeah exactly now if yes. he wiggles he hold wiggles just tight. hold him on very tight and i just just in case he throws his tail just excellent there you go. Yes, there you go. so now, beautiful. Huh? One of the things that we love about what we do is we can allow in different areas, we allow kids and, and parents and teachers and anybody who wants to, to touch these animals. Because once you touch them, you, you have a whole different back, sense of what yes, the animals are about. Exactly. I mean, didn't you think he was going to be hard and stiff? You know, yeah. And he's not. I mean, he's, he's smooth he's very and smooth flexible and, feel and like soft. like my shoes that I will never wear again. <laughs> and another cool thing about him really? is you see that uh, his belly is very smooth and nice because alligators are never on their back. Wow. They're on their back if they're sick or they're fighting. Yeah. But they never expose their belly to anything, um, which is kind of a cool thing mm -hmm. to never be able to, you know, I mean, I can't imagine. I sleep in about eight different positions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, you know what I mean? Right? Sometimes I find myself underneath the bed on yeah. top of my head. How about that? <laughs> With all of that being said, I would like to thank Mac and Joni, Joni. Joni yep. for being a part of the Let Us Talk About It 2 show. But before we even get up out of here, I don't know if you guys have any more. We can pull out one more little one if you want to. Okay, we can do just one more because I, I don't yeah. even want them to go. Like, yeah. I think yeah, I might, them away I think I might have my kids the drive my car home. I might jump in the van with you guys. I can't believe you didn't come and up and at least catch the alligator. Yeah, she's very scary. She doesn't even, can we get Cody in here too, please? If, if that's okay, we can get Cody in here, my dog. Oh, sure. Yeah, We'd love course. to see Cody. We have three dogs at home. What kind so of we're thing? dog lovers. We have a Shiloh Shepherd, which is a very big shepherd kind of dog. We have a Border Collie, and then we have what I call, and I, I don't mean to say it out loud, but God's Freak Show, because she's a mutt, and she's St. Bernard and Beagle mix. Ooh, so she she's must very be large, cool. right? Well, she's about 60 pounds. She's not oh, okay. as big as you think she is. She's a little bit more on the beagley side. Oh so no! Can take this, this friend out, and oh, this guy, I'm actually not going to take out. Now this is a show his friend. We will show him because.
The thing with these guys the are yeah. the tarantulas. Those are very well. Mm. See, do you want to see it? No. Mm. It's nice and fuzzy, it's right? Very cute it's very to cute. Yeah. Um, they actually, when they get irritated, they will take their legs and they'll rub it against themselves, and they have these little hairs on them, and it disperses those hairs, and it's a way for them to get predators away from them. Wow. Um, because they, it, it gets into your skin and makes it irritated, it gets into your eyes and irritates your eyes. But again, another highly misunderstood animal. You need spiders. I have spiders in my house. My husband's always trying to get rid of them. I like them because they catch the flies in the summertime. As well as and the mosquitoes. The mosquitoes. Yeah. And um, the mosquitoes, yes. Right. And the roaches, right? I'm, yeah. I haven't had... They will catch roaches and they will eat them. Yes. Okay, okay. I'm, I don't really feed roaches to them, do you? Uh, I feed them crickets. Sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> crickets? Crickets. Yeah. They eat crickets. They'll eat, they're mostly an insectivore, so they'll eat all different kinds of insects. Uh, and okay. they are all... All spiders are venomous. They all carry all, a venom, okay. and a venom is a digestive juice um, yeah, that helps shaya? them to liquefy their food so that they can drink it. So the shea is it's very... kind of like a frap. The shea attracts <laughs> spiders. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because she's very scary of them, but she attracts spiders to the point that anytime she turns her head, she sees a spider. Oh, wow. We don't see spiders, <laughs> but she's the only one that catches a spider, yeah. you know, and then she will cry if I'm not home. Aww. She will cry for me to come home to remove the spider. <laughs> the spider's not going to hurt you, just so you know. They won't hurt you. They'll run away from you because if you think about it, when you have house spiders and they're this big, and then you come walking up to them and you're like this big, gigantic thing, um, they want nothing to do with you because they know you could kill them. So yes. they're going to just hibernate and, and uh, try to stay away from you. And most animals are like that. Most animals don't want to interact with humans at all. Don't want nothing to do with a all. human, exactly. Yeah. Hi, Cody. So this is Cody. Come over here, Cody. Hi, Cody. Take the leash off, Troy. Such Take a good puppy here. dog. And this is my Cody. Come on under the table, Cody. You can find come me under here. here. Come here, come here, come here. Hi, buddy. Hi. Uh, Where are you going? Uh, all those smells. <laughs> He's like, all these cool smells. Come on, Cole. Come on. Come on. You're doing it right. No, go around. Go around. Come here, Cole. Come here, Cole. Hi, buddy. But I have to say that, you know, again, this is our passion. This is what we love to do. We love to tell people about it. We like to educate people about it. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually, we just started a, a new nonprofit for animals. Really? Um, for a refuge and sanctuary um, to house these animals because we do get so many of them. Mm. Um, and we're very excited about that. So that's a new venture for us off Tommy. as a branch off. Yeah, I would, let me go. I would like to. I would like to know more about that. Because, oh, absolutely! I will know, definitely get you some information we, about it. We're going to have a huge fundraiser coming up. Really? And it's going to be the night of the reptiles, and we're actually going to have a whole bunch of big reptiles. One of them's Fred, who's our six Fred. foot okay. alligator, who's got his own Facebook page. And yeah. Hey. <laughs> And then we have um, a friend of mine who does works with raptors. So okay. she's going to be bringing in hawks and things hey, like that. But I'll get you the Whoa, information. Hawks and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, so it's a lot of fun. It's going to be for a great cause. Um, we're doing it May 22nd. Soon. I'll let you this know. This soon. This soon. Yeah. Okay, because we're doing a doggy parade in, as well coming up. Yeah, so. that's coming up we soon. We have a lot of things going on with these animals. And this yeah. is Cody. You know, Cody has to represent for the Celtics. Yes. yes. Boston. Hi, Cody. Um, and with that Hi, being Cody. said, enough is enough. <laughs> because, you know, I may have to take an animal home and leave Cody with there you guys. You How about that? There you go. But thank I you guys for watching. Thank you so much Thanks for, for having us. Yes, it's been really you. a great time. Mac, I really Mac, enjoyed Mac, it. Mac, yes. Mac, yes. Mac, Daddy. Yes. Mac, Daddy. That's Mac, Daddy. Mac, Daddy. Mac, Daddy. Mac, Daddy. Oh, I can't thank wait to tell you. Thank you all for watching the Let Us Talk Thanks. About It 2 show. Um, tune in next time. Um, I, I'm just so fabulous. Listen, <laughs> Thanks for watching. Love you guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Just too darn cute. <laughs> 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 Let's talk about
Jesus. Jesus.